So your full name, I just said it, with Etta Rosemary Makiva, but many people know you as Sassy MC. So how, you know, how did that name come about? What inspired that name? <laughs> that story is, is a funny one. Mm -hmm. So when I first started at uh, my first profession, uh, professional job I did was at Cool FM, um, where I was an administrator and also um, a talk show host. And there was this um, talk show that was given to me. It was called Soul to Soul. Um, it was a relationship show. And the first time I went on a show, I was being co I was co-hosting another person, um, Eileen Reeves. Uh, after our first episode, first two, three episodes, um, the owner of the radio station, Mr. Christopher Hizanamuka, he was like, do you guys have a radio name? And Eileen was like, I'm Eileen Reeves on Keys. And I'm like, no, I, I don't have, um, a radio name because this is my first professional job i'm just starting so i don't even know how to come up with a name until he was like okay so i'm gonna name you sassy and then i'm gonna name elaine frisky so we were sassy and frisky on soul to soul and that's how the name came came about and i've just been promoting the name i'm just making the name known to people out there so, so it was given to me would you also say it's a, it's a blessing to discover your purpose, quote unquote, at an early age? Yes, it's a blessing because, and one thing again, I want to say, I want to say thank you to my parents because they have been really supportive on this journey. Like even my dad, he wanted me to work to ELBC so badly. Uh, my my aunts worked there at the time. Um, uh, Mrs. Hunter, uh, Hattie Hunter, she worked there at that time. She had a big position, and she was. He was like, "Your auntie is at ELBC. Go and talk to her. Let her, you know, put you there so that you can be practicing." I was like, "No, I don't want to work at ELBC. ELBC got too much old people. I don't want to be there." Yeah, so they they've been really, really supportive. So it it's a blessing both for my parents and both discovering um and, and the other end discovering what I wanted to do at a tender age. That's that's awesome. Now, fast forward, you went to, you know, after you were a child broadcaster, you went to the FMCA, you, you know, graduated and then you went to AME University, got your BA in mass communication and public administration. Now, considering with your experience. Honest, with honors, please, with honors. With honors. Excuse me, my I'm very disrespectful. <laughs> With honors, excuse me. Yes. So you, you, you did that, you got the experience. A part of why you pursue those things is because again, like you said, you knew what you wanted to do. You're very decisive about it. But mm -hmm. now that's your story, right? So considering your story and somebody else who wants to do the same thing, do you think obtaining a degree in mass communication specifically, do you think that's relevant to be as successful as you are? Um, I could say that it's a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. The thing about being successful to where I am is about the mindset. It's about consistency. I mean, wow. <laughs> LEC, Jeff, come to someone like a rock, you know? <laughs> Welcome to LRB, right? <laughs> Welcome to LRB, I got a little light here. So, um, so as I was saying, I think mm -hmm. I would, I would, I would lean in more towards um, the mindset. being consistent and lean in more towards the mindset. Because I could study mass communication, but if I don't have the passion for broadcasting, I will not be as successful as I am right now. Mm -hmm. Because this field is not it's not an easy field in Liberia. It doesn't have money. I mean, it has if you you know, know how to consistent. Make but it's it, it's not like being you know a nine to five person like going to an office and sitting there and you know getting salary at the end of the month. There's no money. There's not much money in the media um, industry in Liberia. I would say in Liberia because this is where I live. So there is not much money in it. So for you to reach where I am and for you to go to where I want to go, because I know that I am not at where I want to be, you have to be consistent. You have to have passion for the media. You've made a name for yourself, obviously. You have a lot of followers, about 88,000 on Instagram when I last checked. And you have a, a 25,000 between your personal Facebook and your brand Facebook as well. And a couple hundreds on YouTube as well. So tell us, what, what level of responsibility is it that you have having that many people follow the work you do? Um, I know that I have to update them every time. <laughs> like, especially Instagram. Mm -hmm. 
so Instagram is such that uh, if you were maybe um, a, let me use the word stripper mm -hmm. and you started, you know, doing stripping things on Instagram and it gave you followers. You have to be consistent with your stripping <laughs> content. If you deviate, yes. <laughs> if you deviate from that content, you, your 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 engagement it tends to drop, mm -hmm. and then you lose followers. That's how Instagram algorithms, mm -hmm. you know, that's how that that's how it's, it's structured. So uh, when I got when I got those followers. I wasn't doing more of my work. That was when I had the break. So I wasn't really doing more of the talk. I wasn't doing more of the talk. So I was doing more personal things, mm -hmm. you know, TikTok videos, dancing, you know, just doing, you know, funny, funny things on the internet. So again, you know, it gave me traffic. It gave me more followers, more people to come on my page. So when I finally did, did the talk with Sassy MC, I cleared my page and then it was just more of my work, more of my work and more of my work. So because these followers came to my page because of the personal things I used to do and now I'm no longer doing these things. So my engagement tend to drop. That's what, that's something, that's one of the secrets that people don't understand about social media, especially Instagram. Instagram is very hard to deal with. You're right? very, very heavy on brand. And one thing I like about you is you understand the concept of being a professional. You have a website, you have social media handles, and just recently you came out with you know your own merchandise, which I'm going to put on the screen here so people can see. And uh, yes, and... <laughs> yes. So so that's that's one of your. your and are you rocking it? Yeah, that that's one of the the items yes. you sell, so and they can get hoodies or sweatpants. And also we have that on the screen as well. Uh, a lot of beautiful colors, but tell us, uh, firstly, the products that you have, and then we'll discuss the market inside of it. <laughs> okay, so um, I thought about doing something for my brand to help to expose my brand and not just to just be on the radio or on the TV. And everybody, you know, you, I want people to wear my brand. I want people to, you know, to be passing around and say, okay, so this is Sassy MC and all like that. So I thought about doing something. I thought about coming up with the merch. Um, so I thought about um, the sweatpants that I did. I thought about t-shirts. I thought about crop tops. That one is, is going to be here. I'm, I'm going to produce that, those ones probably by next month and, and all that. But there are a couple of, you know, other things that are coming up that's going to constitute the sassy brand. So there's something that I just did, you know, for people to wear it and support me. Everywhere they go, once they're wearing my shirt, people are gonna ask, "Who's that person?" And it's be like, "This is Sassy MC. I'm wearing Sassy MC." You know, that that's a way also to support my brand. You've hosted the red carpet for the Golden Image Awards. You also hosted Miss Liberia. What has been your favorite event that you've hosted so far? Do you do you know that I've already thought about it? <laughs> favorite event now now is the good time to think about it i don't even know if i have a favorite event because to host even i am let me speak we are cool and i am all and i am hmm i don't know okay so i would definitely say the most recent one it will be my favorite because i, I was treated like a queen so I, I recently hosted alongside my own mentor, uh, Mr. Chris Wallow, the first ever Liberian Red Symposium by the Ministry of Agriculture. And I, that was my favorite because I was lodged in at Farmington Hotel for like two nights and three days. Yeah, so I went, uh, yeah, I went Sunday and came back Wednesday. I had, I had fun, I ate out. I was hanging out with dignitaries, Damn. having dinner with top people in Liberia. So, you know, I would say that was my favorite. That was my favorite, yeah, because I mean it was it was superb. And next up was the Golden Image Awards. That one it was where I got to interview the president. So that was <laughs> I, I yeah. saw a clip of that. I saw when he first yes. walked in, he was in a, a black a black uh yeah oh you watched 
you with a golden it. with a golden tie, if I remember correctly. Yes. So that was, that's my second favorite because I got to interview the president, like the president. Now, when you say when when you say when you get that excited, are you excited about the, his position or him as an individual? So um, I, I think I'm excited about both because without being a president, he's a star in Liberia. Mm -hmm. Without the president, the, the presidential title, he's a big person. He's he's a world best, you know. Mm -hmm. He already had a couple of titles before becoming the president of Liberia. So right. I think it's both. Is there anything else that you were looking forward to to this interview that maybe we didn't mention? This is the time to mention that uh, something about what you do or maybe a brand, another thing that we didn't talk about. This is your time. So there are, there are other things that I do that we didn't talk about. So I want to talk mm -hmm. about it. Yeah, so... I'm also a voiceover artist. I'm also mm -hmm. a producer. I'm also a speaker, and I'm an I'm an illustrator and all that. So, <laughs> so <laughs> you touch, for any... the talk show hosting, the even we need a test everywhere because you don't know I'm on the client. It will come from. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, you heard her. She's a voiceover artist, and if you don't know what that is, if you have a commercial that you just need somebody talking in the background and you don't you're not seeing their face, she's yes. able to do that for you. And she's also able to act in a commercial for you as well. So there is a lot more to the to what she does, of course. Okay. So if you're interested in this person, if you have any representation things that you need, <laughs> you need somebody to represent. Uh, of course, you have her contact. She's on all uh, social media platforms, so you can reach out to her.